Hello, Bobby Torres of Frightbox recording here to explain to you why your mix sounds so bad when you try and make it loud. Now, if there's one thing that I keep hearing over and over and over and over again when people send me their mixes are mixes that are heavily distorted, heavily clipped, and I could tell that they're trying to get their mix loud, but they're making the same mistake that we all make. And that's when you try to cram your mix through a single limiter and make it loud that way. Well, I have news for you. It doesn't work. Yes, your mix will be loud. It'll read that it's loud on a meter, but in general, it'll sound like crap. So in this video, I'm gonna show you my dead simple approach to achieving loud mixes and masters the easy way, and in my opinion, the professional way and the way that yields the most transparent results. So I have here an audio sample of a mix that I've done for my good friends in a band called Ursia's Fragment. The song is called Cyanide Cult. Let's take a listen to it. Then I'm gonna break down what I have going on on my master bus chain, plug-in wise, to achieve such a loud master and mix. Let's check out the sample. <laughs> So again, that's a song called Cyanide Cult by the band Ursius Fragment. I'll leave a link below to their music in this video's description if you like what you've heard. So the name of the game when it comes to achieving a mix and master that's both loud and musical and appealing to listen to and not overly clipped is having control over your dynamic range. In other words, not just taking any old mix and cramming it through a limiter, that's amateur hour. So right here is my master bus chain and I have a bunch of plugins. Now it might seem like a hypocrite because if you've watched any of my videos, you probably heard me talk about minimalism and not using a lot of plugins, but the way that I'm using these plugins is intentional. It's not about using expensive plugins or even using a lot of plugins. It's about having each plugin on my master bus chain doing very little work individually. What ends up happening is you end up with a very, very controlled mix where the overall level is nice and in control that you could easily bring up and put through a limiter without having the limiter work too hard. Now there is not one right or wrong way to do this. You don't need these exact plugins. You don't even need to have them in this exact order. But I figured I'd share with you a real world example of my master bus chain and how I'm using the plugins that I use to achieve a loud mix and master. And the other thing I want to say is that it's not all about mastering. So much of the loudness comes from the mix itself. And again, what you have going on on your two bus chain. So up first here, I have an EQ plugin, which has nothing to do with making my mix loud. I just decided, uh, you know, toward the end of this mix that it was a little heavy in the lower mids and the upper part of the low end and a little harsh around the 2K range. So I'm pulling out about a DB or even less than a DB in those ranges. But the first big tamale here is my SSL bus compressor. Bus compression, in my opinion, is extremely important when it comes to dialing in a mix that's loud because it's the first thing in the chain, generally, that's gonna glue the sound of your mix together and limit dynamic range. The issue is that I found that people usually either underdo master bus compression or overdo it. Now I have heard great mixes done by pros where they're slamming their master bus compressor, but for me personally, I like to aim for about two to four dB of bus compression. Now let's look at how much gain reduction is happening in my bus compressor. <laughs> Averaging about one to two dB of consistent gain reduction. When the 808 kicked in, it was a little more than that, but overall around two dB of gain reduction. And for me, that seems to work really well, at least when combined with the other things that I have going on in my chain, which I'm gonna share with you right now. So I like to follow up my bus compression with some tape saturation for two reasons. Tape saturation will generally add some natural tape style compression to your mix and add some nice pleasing harmonics and make your mix just overall sound a little more analog. And also added harmonics tend to make sound sources perceivably louder. So again, not only is it reducing more dynamic range, it's making your mix louder by adding some gentle and subtle harmonics. In my opinion, it's not great to overdo this where it sounds like a crazy deliberate effect. A little bit goes a long way. But with that being said, let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place in my tape saturator. And in this case, I happen to be using the PSP Vintage Warmer Two. It's an old plugin, but it's still one of my favorites. Let's take a look at the meters. <laughs> so 
So about another half dB of gain reduction on top of the gain reduction that's taking place in my bus compressor. So, so far we're looking at about three dB of gain reduction, but again, it's shared amongst these two plugins so far. So after my tape saturator, I just happened to have another EQ. I guess while I was mixing this, I felt that even after adding tape saturation, it had a little bit too much low end in the subs and even the upper part of the low end. So I'm reducing a little bit at around 65 Hertz and around 135 Hertz and even at around 265 Hertz. But again, we're talking minimal amounts of reduction, about half a dB, a dB around there. And again, this has nothing to do with making my mix loud. I just figured I'd share with you what's going on in the EQ since it's on my master bus chain. But after my second EQ, I I have my C4 multiband compressor. Yes, I know I've read in comments over and over again, people ask me, why are you using the C4? Well, now we've got the C6. I don't care. If the plugin works and I know it well, I will stick with it. Even if the plugin is old, if it still works for me, I will stick with it forever. Now the difference between this compressor and the initial compressor is that this is a multiband compressor and we have different amounts of compression happening amongst the different bands. Now I have it set to where it's doing pretty much the same thing for the most part amongst each band and I'm only using it in a subtle way, but because I have individual compression happening in different frequency bands, the result is going to be even more transparent than a regular compressor. So with that being said, let's look at how much gain reduction is taking place in this plugin. <laughs> So around two to three dB of gain reduction. Let's go with three. So, so far we have a total of six dB of gain reduction, but again, spread out amongst three different plugins. The first one was a regular compressor. The second one was a little bit of tape saturation and tape compression. And then also here I have a multiband compressor. And then finally, after my multiband compressor, I have my mastering plugin. And one thing I have going on in this particular mix is I have even more harmonics and saturation added to the mix in my plugin here, which happens to be Ozone 9, I believe. I think Ozone 10 now exists, but again, Ozone 9 still works, so I'm still using it. So again, the tape saturation adds a little bit of perceived volume, but the big tamale here is my limiter. And because I've taken the time to control my dynamic range and my mix in general with these multiple plugins, my limiter is not going to have to work as hard. In other words, I'm not just taking the mix that's crazy and spiky and overly dynamic and slamming it through a limiter and expecting it to sound right. I've done a lot of work before the limiting. And again, because of that, the limiter is not going to have to work that hard. Let's pay attention to the number that's gonna appear here, which is the gain reduction in this limiter. And let's see how hard it's working during this heavy section of the song, which is the loudest section of the song. <laughs> This limiter isn't doing much. We've got around one to two to maybe three dB of gain reduction, maybe a little more during the 808 drop, but in general, around two to three dB of gain reduction in this limiter, which is much different than taking your limiter and making it work hard and have it knock off 10 dB to 15 dB to 20 dB of gain reduction. That's not gonna sound great. It's gonna be really harsh, definitely gonna be clipped in a non-pleasing way and um, just not that great. So as you can see, this is not complicated. This is not rocket science, but for some reason, the word really hasn't gotten out too much on the internet, in my opinion, about this. And people seem to think there's a magical plugin or a magical trick to make your mixes loud all in one box. And in my opinion, that doesn't really work well. Just use a handful of plugins that you're comfortable with, like a bus compressor that you're really comfortable with, a multiband compressor that you're really comfortable with, and also a tape saturator, and of course, a limiter that you know inside and out, you know it well, and you are comfortable with. And if you add these plugins together and you have them doing a little bit of work amongst themselves, you will end up with a nice, loud, and punchy mix that sounds pleasing and professional. And this is how most pros work. So I'm curious to know, are you guilty of trying to make your mix loud all with one plugin by just slamming your mix through a limiter, for example? Leave a comment in the comment section below and let me know what you've got going on. I'd love to hear your opinion. Now, the truth is when it comes to achieving a pro level mix or master, gear has next to nothing to do with it. It all comes down to how well you understand basic, basic EQ and compression. And because of this, I put together my crisp and clear heavy mix formula. 
The Chris McClear Heavy Mix Formula is a straightforward PDF guide that showcases my favorite EQ and compression starting points for all of the main instruments within Heavy Mix. And the guide itself has clickable links to private tutorials and multi-track downloads so you could practice the techniques with the same files that I mix in the guide. Again, the Crisp and Clear Heavy Mix formula is absolutely free right now, and you could have direct immediate access right now by clicking the link below in this video's description. If you found this video helpful, like, comment, subscribe, and share, and don't forget to click the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload one of my weekly videos on all things metal and rock productions. And until next time, happy mixing.